afternoon and I uh, went to Sunny, so thank you so much, Church, for uh, bringing me there. And uh, it was really, really a great time. And uh, I love this church. It's, it's just, uh, you know, you, you go to some churches. I've been, uh, Christy and I have been to some churches going out and about and uh, vacation sometimes. And uh, you just don't feel, uh, feel right there, you know. And uh, there should be a, a, a spirit in one accord, the Bible says. Amen. And uh, that's how I feel here. And uh, Pastor O'Neill is so, such a great man of God. And uh, Ms. O'Neill, and I pray for you guys every single day, every day. And uh, so I was told that, uh, you know, I uh, went a little bit short this morning, so I'm going to preach for two hours tonight. Amen. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you know, speaking of the uh, simplicity of the gospel, uh, we actually, um, uh, Pastor Pleasure up at uh, Calvary had uh, asked uh, uh, different people to, uh, different men of God to preach uh, on Wednesday night about the simplicity of the gospel. And uh, I, uh, he asked me to preach and uh, so I, when I preached, I said, uh, you know, the, the simple plan of salvation. And uh, I preached, the only thing I preached on was uh, the track. And uh, the, the four points in the back of the track, the prayer. And, uh, you know, so I even had somebody come up for an example and, uh, you know, just read uh, the track. And, uh, you know, and the other person, you know, pretended that they weren't saved and, and they prayed uh, the sinner's prayer. And, um, and, and it is that simple. Well, uh, the very uh, next week, uh, there was a testimony from a teenage girl that's, uh, uh, that was, uh, recent, had been recently saved, and uh, she went out uh, soul winning on Thursday night, and uh, she heard my message, and uh, uh, she, uh, she was nervous, uh, but she went to somebody, and uh, all she did was she took a track, and uh, she asked somebody if they knew they were going to heaven, they said no, she asked, can I show you, they said yes. And uh, she said that uh, uh, all she did was she read the, the point, read the Bible verse. Point, very important, by the way, the Bible verses all Amen. right, that we need to read. Right. It's not about your testimony, right. although you can tell, tell them your testimony, but it's the Bible verses. Uh, Jesus said, my words are spirit. So when you yeah. quote the Bible, uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to their hearts. Amen. And um, so uh, anyway, she went point by point. And uh, she said, uh, you know, ask questions, you understand? And they said, yes. And she asked, uh, do you want to pray to be saved? And they said, yes. She led her first soul to the Lord. Amen. And uh, yeah. it was great. And all she did was just read the track, and that's it. And that's how easy it is to lead someone to the Lord. Just read, read from the, if you don't know, just read from the track. Right. It's that easy. Uh, but uh, all right, uh, I'll turn your Bibles to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1. 1 Timothy chapter 1. And. Um, if uh, we'd all uh, stand, First Timothy chapter one, and we're gonna I'm gonna read uh, verses twelve through seventeen. Uh, First Timothy chapter one, uh, twelve through seventeen. Timothy Paul was uh, writing Timothy a, a, a letter, and uh, and just uh, trying to encourage him. And uh, so uh, verse number twelve, the Bible says, uh, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me uh, for that. He counted me faithful, putting me uh, into the ministry. Uh, by the way, if you're saved, uh, he puts you in the ministry of uh, leading others to the Lord. That's that's a ministry that everybody has. Uh, no one's exempt from that. If you're saved, uh, you're obligated to tell others the gospel. And uh, who, verse number 13, who is before a blasphemer and a persecutor and an injurious, but uh, I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And uh, all we do, you know, before you're saved, you do a lot of things and, and ignorantly. Uh, and uh, because you weren't believed, uh, you weren't a believer. Uh, verse number 15, this is a faithful saying uh, and worthy of uh, all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit, for this cause I obtain mercy that in me uh, first Jesus Christ might show forth all along suffering. Uh, for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. And verse number 17 is the last. And now unto the King eternal, immortal, and invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to be preaching on uh, tonight. Make a change in your life. Make a change in your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you again for the opportunity to hear from you. Uh, Lord, uh, I'm not uh, the one that's doing it. I'm just a vessel. And uh, a willing vessel to be used by you. Pray that you would bless tonight, bless uh, my words, 
and uh, give me the words of wisdom to speak, the power that I need, and I pray that you can speak to all of our hearts tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Uh, make a change in your life. Make a change in your life. Uh, when we get saved, there's a change that happens in your life. Uh, the Bible says uh, I, we are a new creature. Amen. And uh, what kind of creature? I don't know, but <laughs> you're a new creature, the Bible says. And uh, uh, the Bible calls us, those who are saved, a peculiar people. Right. And so uh, that, that means that you stand out. And you ought to stand out. Uh, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. Amen. And so we're supposed to be transformed from the person that we were before and to uh, a person that God wants us to be. And so we're supposed to be changing, by the way, forever changing uh, until we get to heaven. Uh, we're supposed to ch constantly change for the better. And we can do that. Why? Because the, the Bible, you can never learn enough from the Bible. Doesn't matter how long you read it, how many times you read it from cover to cover. Uh, I, I have uh, many Bibles at home, and uh, so uh, I'll, I'll read the Bible from cover to cover. And uh, then I, ha I also have uh, a chronological Bible, and I think that's how you call it, right? And uh, it goes from uh, uh, chronologically uh, in order. Um, and so, you know, because uh, the Bible's uh, not written in chronological order, but I, I have a Bible like that, so I read from that, and that's, that was an eye-opener. I uh, get to see what happens from the beginning and, uh, until the end, and, uh, and it, it was great, you know. And so, but we're, we're, we can always continue to learn from the Bible. Uh, you go ahead and you open up the Bible. You know, it, we even heard it from this morning. Uh, we'll see, he was teaching a Sunday school uh, uh, lesson, and uh, he saw, he was reading the, the, the scripture to us, and he's like, oh, I've never seen that before. And I wonder how many times he's read the verse. Amen. And the same thing. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll read the verses and verses, and, and I've read been, I've read the Bible, I don't know, countless times uh, ever since. I mean, I got saved at a very young age, uh, seven years old. Um, I, I went to a Baptist uh, church and, uh, uh, and my whole entire life. Uh, there's a sign in, in front of my door, uh, Baptist born, Baptist bred. When I die, I'll be Baptist dead. And, uh, and so uh, it, it wards off, you know, the, the, the Jehovah Witnesses and the Mormons from knocking on my door. Uh, so from them, of course, you know, there's been a couple uh, that still has, which I welcome them because I can go ahead and present them the gospel. Right. And, uh, you know, and, but, uh, you know, uh, we, we're supposed to be forever changing, forever changing. And you can never, ever study the Bible enough where you know it all because you don't. Uh, we cannot know. The, this is literally the mind of Christ. Amen. And uh, we cannot know, we cannot understand fully the mind of Christ. That's why we need to continue uh, to read it and continue to study it. Uh, but uh, uh, there's a, uh, I used to be a youth pastor up, uh, up north. And uh, that's where I got the gray hairs. Um, you know, I, I used to have a full uh, brown hair, you know, and, uh, but uh, now it's, uh, I, I say it's silver. Is it silver? I don't know. Not gray, right? Silver? I don't know. And, yeah, there you go. I, you know, either way, you know, I'm, I'm smarter because of it, right? Uh, anyways, <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I used to be a youth pastor up north and uh, teach the teenagers. There was a song that uh, we used to teach. Uh, and uh, the teenagers, and of course, especially when we had youth rallies, and uh, you know, the, the, but there's been a great change since I've been bo born again. I don't know if you've heard it, uh, but uh, it goes. Uh, I'm not going to sing it for you because you probably <laughs> run leaving, uh, you know. But uh, <laughs> somebody asked me this morning, "Hey, did you want to be a part of this?" I'm like, "No. If you want people to stay here, you won't want to hear me sing." <laughs> uh, but uh, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. The things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. There's been a great change since I've been born again. Amen. And there ought to be a great change since you've been born again. Um, and, uh, you know, I've seen it. I've seen it in uh, people that I've grown up with uh, that got maybe saved later in life. All of a sudden, uh, you, you, uh, you uh, present the gospel to them. They get saved. And you, you actually literally see that change. And uh, it's great to see, but uh, we ought to be continuously changing in the life that God has given to us. You remember that your life is not your own. Right. It, right. It's God's life. <laughs> all right. And uh, we need to continue to com be conformed to the image and likeness of Almighty God. 
And uh, so 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 17, you don't have to turn there. Uh, but the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And, uh, you know, we ought to be uh, uh, putting away those old things and, and uh, continuously drawing to the new things. The old things are the, the worldly things. The new things are the godly things. And uh, we ought to continue er, uh, forever continuously be changed. Uh, turn your Bibles actually to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 10. Uh, Ephesians uh, chapter 2 uh, and verse uh, number 10. Continuously change. Uh, the Bible says, uh, for we are his workmanship created in, G in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. And uh, we ought to be walking in uh, the footsteps of Jesus Christ. Now, those who are saved, we call ourselves what? Christians. Mm -hmm. And uh, the reason why, now, uh, you, you can be saved and not be a Christian. Yeah. Now, just because you call yourself a Christian doesn't mean that you're saved. Christian, the word Christian means Christ-like. Walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. You can be saved and never enter the, the uh, church doors and uh, never read your Bible, never pray. Uh, you, can, you can be saved and live like the devil. Now, God will uh, continuously convict you, uh, but, uh, but being, uh, being a Christian is walking in the footsteps of Jesus Christ. So we, what would Christ do? What would Jesus do? Uh, that's exactly what we ought to be doing. Why? Because we're, we are his workmanship. Right. And he's continuously working on our hearts, and he's continuously working on our lives. Uh, how does he do that? Well, uh, he does that uh, through many different ways. Uh, but we ought to be, number one, we ought to be asking for a change. When's the last time you asked Jesus Christ, when's the last time you prayed and asked Jesus to change you for the better? We ought to continuously be looking and striving to be better. You take, go ahead and take the sports world. Uh, you know, and uh, uh, what, what are they, you, you take uh, uh, the uh, NFL um, and, uh, or the uh, Major League Baseball or uh, hockey or whatever, any sports, and what are they doing? They're continuously changing and trying to get better and trying to get better. Uh, they say uh, Larry Bird uh, 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 practice and, uh, uh, for uh, hours and hours every single day um, and uh, just shooting the basket. And he, he, he'd go up to the, the foul line and, and just uh, continuously shoot and continuously shoot. And, uh, and why is he doing that? To get better. And, of course, we see the results. Well, we shouldn't. That, that's a worldly thing. That's going to amount to absolutely nothing. You know, this secular world, you know, yes, we can be great businessmen, and we ought to strive to be at our best with everything that we do, but we ought to strive to be our best uh, uh, as Christians. Amen. And uh, we ought to continuously uh, uh, strive to be better in our Christian lives. And uh, just as the world continuously uh, uh, practices and practices and practices uh, to be better at what they need to, they want to do, we ought to be continuously practice and practice and practice to be better Christians. Amen. Amen. And uh, we ought to be asking God for a change. And asking God, God, uh, you know, and some people are like, well, I don't know, uh, you know, that, that uh, good old uh, asking God for patience. Don't ask for patience. God might just teach it to you. Well, you know, what's wrong with that? <laughs> and, uh, you know, if, if you're going to, you know what, to be great, th there's going to be some, uh, some hard times. Uh, and uh, it's just, you know, uh, you, you go ahead and take uh, boxing. And, uh, you know, Mike Tyson, yeah, he's a great boxer. He was a great boxer. And, uh, of course, he bites ears. But anyways, uh, you know, he, he's a great boxer. And uh, how do you get that way? By sparring. And, uh, you know, he, and I'm sure that people, uh, it, 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 uh, his training, um, you know, when he was sparring, uh, was punching him. And he got hurt a little bit. Uh, but uh, he didn't lay down. He got hurt, and he got better from it. And so when we go through our Christian life, we ask God to uh, help us get better in our Christian life, help, help us ask God to help us to continue to change. Yes, he might uh, allow us to go through a trial for that change, but it's for the better. And we ought to uh, welcome that, uh, uh, whatever 
it is that God throws in our life, and we ought to chalk it up as, well, uh, that's that. I learned from that, and I'm a better Christian for it. Uh, too many times, people, uh, they go through hardships in life, and uh, instead of getting better, they start blaming God. And uh, that's the reason why there are empty seats uh, to your left and to your right, because people gave up on God, uh, because God was trying to change them for the better, and they didn't understand that. Uh, but if we ask God for a change, uh, then God will help us change. And sometimes it, it takes a, a little bit of hardship and heartache uh, to, for that change, but we're going to be the better for it. Ask God for the change. Uh, Psalm chapter 51, verse number 10. Uh, the Bible says, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And we ought to ask God for that. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Look, we're, 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 even though we're saved, our flesh is not. And our flesh is going to continue to sin. And uh, we have a, a sin nature. And we have to ask God to continuously uh, help us to improve our life. And continuously ask God to uh, work on your heart. Uh, it doesn't matter what position that you hold. Pastor O'Neill, I'm sure, that asks God to continuously work in his heart. Amen. And, uh, uh, and uh, But create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit with me, within me. And we ought to be asking God. You should be asking God for a change. Number two, reading the Bible increases that change. Amen. We already uh, said it, but the word of God are pure words. Amen. Uh, and uh, the Word of God, is, uh, the King James Bible, is perfect. Amen. There's not one wrong thing here in this Bible. Amen. Yo, know, you can go ahead and give me an NIV. I tell you what, you give me an NIV, I can actually show you how uh, God kicked Jesus Christ out of heaven through an NIV. Yep. Yep. And I can show you other verses where uh, it just it just kills Jesus Christ, and that Jesus Christ is a sinner. I can prove it from right. other Bibles, but the right. King James Bible is perfect. Amen. Uh, we right. know that Jesus Christ is perfect. Uh, John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And then verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld that glory. Amen. And uh, so uh, since Jesus Christ is perfect, and the, the Bible is Jesus in word form, the Bible, King James Bible, is perfect. Amen. And by reading the Bible and continuing reading the Bible, uh, it increases the change that we're asking God for. So it's in, you can see it's in the succession. So first you have, uh, you have uh, asking God for a change. And then ask you, after you ask God for that change, you continuously read the Bible to, to get that change. And, and uh, you ask God for that change. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, verse number uh, 16. So we're almost there. So go ahead and turn your Bibles there. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16. Of course, uh, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. This, this Bible is fully inspired, by the way. Uh, and uh, we said it this morning. Uh, and uh, that, that, that was a great Sunday school lesson, uh, let me tell you. But uh, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is what? Profitable. Profitable. For what? For doctrine. For reproof. Uh, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, all those things. You know, some people, they, they just hate being corrected. You know? And uh, they, it, it, look, if I'm doing something wrong, I want to make sure I'm, I'm corrected. Why? Because I want to do it right. <laughs> you know, and uh, I, I was in the, the Marine Corps. Uh, any military? Amen. Amen. And, uh, and uh, any Marines? Except for five. All right, all right. Uh, but uh, that's our communication there. We bark at each other. Anyways, uh, but uh, you know, I, I was in the Marine Corps, and uh, you know, and uh, they they had us. They taught us uh, how to shoot the M16, and uh, what they did was um, they they uh, sat us down, and we were kind of like Indian style position, and uh, they call it snapping in. And uh, they, they put a barrel uh, in front of you about 25 yards away, and uh, you just uh, snapped it. So you just uh, held the M16 and just uh, looked through. There's no scope or anything like that, but you just looked through the, the sights and uh, just uh, focus on, on that barrel. 
And uh, that you didn't do anything else but just focus on that barrel, focus on that barrel. And they did it for about a half hour, 45 minutes, and they had us do that every single day, just snapping. Okay, go ahead and snap in. And we didn't, we couldn't say anything. Uh, we had to just uh, sit down there and just snap in. Some kids were just fooling around. They're like, oh, you know, trying to play around. And when the drill instructors weren't looking, but I was like, oh man, you know, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't shoot. The, the most thing I ever shot before the Marine Corps was like a BB gun. <laughs> and uh, I grew up in Rhode Island. It wasn't like, you know, Middleburg or Florida where you can just go ahead and just shoot and, you know, have a, a, a you know, a rifle in the back of your truck, you know, and, you know, I don't know, I, I don't know if you think you can do that now. Anyway, but anyways, but, uh, you know, and uh, so I never, I never really shot anything. So I was like, oh man, I want to, and by the way, uh, I, I was there uh, for a little over three months and you could not have any phone calls. There's no phone calls at all. Uh, you didn't have any access to the outside world, world other than through uh, letters that uh, were being sent to you. And even then, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I didn't get half the letters that were sent to me. Uh, but they said, uh, if anybody shoots expert, uh, then they can get one phone call home. Wow. And I was like, oh man, I, I, I want to get that phone call. I want to get that. And so I practice every single day, every single time. They say, okay, go ahead and snap in. I was like, okay, I don't know what this is doing, but I'm, they, they're, they're telling me for a reason and a purpose. And so I snapped in for that half hour, 45 minutes. And uh, all of a sudden uh, they said, okay, uh, it's time to, to shoot. And uh, so, you know, we practiced for a little bit. Uh, and then they said, okay, it's time to take the test. And uh, so uh, they had us uh, shoot uh, from 100 yards away. Uh, and then they had us uh, shoot from 200 yards away. And uh, then they had us shoot from 500 yards away. And uh, so uh, I shot from 100 yards away. I, got, I hit the target almost every single time. Uh, 200 yards away, almost every single time. And they were at the 500 yards. Now, I don't know if you know this. I mean, 500 yards, it's like 500 football fields away. Wow. And no scope. And uh, the, the target is, I don't know, maybe about the size of the uh, baptistry. Right. You, you think it's, it's big now, but five, 500 yards away, that thing is a little tiny thing. And uh, so I'm like, oh man. And so I, all I needed was I, need to, I needed to shoot uh, the target about five times and I would get expert. And I said, oh man, I gotta do this. I gotta do this. I gotta make my phone call home. And uh, so uh, I, I snapped in, I looked at the target and uh, they're ready, any fire, okay. And so uh, I, I fired and uh, I, then I got eight out of 10. I got expert. I was like, yes, wow. this is great. So I, I, I called home and uh, nobody answered. <laughs> uh, and so, <laughs> but I learned how to shoot and uh, why? Because of practice and practice and practice. You know, we learn how to be a Christian uh, by practicing, reading your Bible, reading your Bible, reading your Bible, reading your Bible. And by the way, it, it doesn't matter what you're reading in this Bible. So and so begat so and so. So and so, I, I preached a message, uh, uh, I think, uh, in Matthew chapter 1, and uh, it, it gave uh, you know, the lineage of Jesus Christ, and right. so and so begat so and so. Hey, you know what? You go ahead and read that. Don't skip over that. No. Don't skip over that. That's Bible. God put it in the Bible for a reason and a purpose. Amen. And uh, so, yeah, no, you don't have to memorize all those names because I don't even know how to pronounce those names. But you don't have to memorize names, but read it. God gave a reason and a purpose to put that in there. And you know what? When you read the Bible, even so-and-so begat so-and-so, or even, you know, uh, uh, looking through, I think it's uh, uh, Leviticus, and with all the uh, furniture, uh, you know, and uh, everything, and, and telling all the dimensions and everything like that, you read that. Because guess what? You know, when you read it, God is still speaking to your heart. It doesn't matter what you're reading. God is speaking Amen. to your heart. And God is, is helping you to continue to grow and grow and grow. So you go ahead and you continuously read that Bible Amen. and become an expert in a Christian. Amen. And uh, But, you know, when you do become an expert and you, and you make that phone call to God, God, look, God, he's never too busy. He'll always answer that phone. Uh, but uh, uh, reading your Bible. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter uh, 2, verse number 15. We, are, we know this verse uh, quite well. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study, study, study. 
And uh, it doesn't matter uh, how young we are, how old we are, we ought to be studying. And uh, I like what Brother Steve said this morning. You go ahead and you uh, read uh, the, that verse, and you look at all the other versions, and it doesn't say study. Right. And I, I looked it up. Uh, and uh, uh, I have an app where uh, you can actually see the different versions and compare right. the different versions. And, uh, and there's, there's just some, some verses that are totally left out of other versions of the Bible. And, uh, and some, some verses uh, just totally uh, loses its meaning. Yeah. Right. And uh, you become dumber by reading the other versions. You read the King James Bible, and uh, but to study to show thyself approved unto God. So first, uh, you have asking God to change you. Uh, second, you have reading the Bible increases that change. Uh, thirdly, uh, the, uh, you come to church, and that's to motivate you to uh, do the things that you learn. You know, you come to church, and you get preached at, right? And you get motivated to do the things that you learn from the Bible, from that change. And uh, you, uh, you know, when when you know any to anything that we learn, uh, it, you lose it after a while if you don't continuously do it. Amen. You do it. I mean, you know, there's some people that uh, that knew certain uh, languages growing up. All of a sudden, they come to America and they speak English, and they never speak their language again. Yes, they can kind of speak their language still, but they lose some 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 words. And uh, we need to continuously come to church uh, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday. Why? Because we need to continuously uh, uh, learn and learn and learn and study and get motivated to do the things that we've learned and uh, uh, continue to come to church. Uh, and uh, you know, it's it's and it's not just the preaching. You know, uh, we, we come here and we have fellowship. You know, um, the Bible, and, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, have, uh, I think it's uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Um, and uh, turn your Bibles there. Uh, and let's uh, look at that verse here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Um, and uh, let's see, let's, where is that verse? Uh, it's, a, it's a famous verse. Uh, forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. Help me, someone. 25. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Sad on my preaching. Uh, but no. <laughs> but uh, uh, not, here it is. Uh, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as, some, uh, as uh, the manner of some is. All of a sudden, you know, there's preachers out there that will stop at that part. And say, oh, see, the Bible says you need to come to church. You need to come to church and, uh, and, and the, because the Bible commands it. Yes, that is part of it. But let's look at the, the rest of it uh, as some manner. But it, what are we supposed to do at church? Exhort. What does it say? Exhort. Exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. You know, God knew that things were going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And you know what? You look at the world now, and it is. Yeah, amen. And, uh, man, I, I grew up in, uh, I was born in uh, 74 and uh, in the 80s and 90s. And, you know, and even then was, you know, it was so different than what it is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, so different. And, you know, I look at. Uh, uh, you know things on and uh, read books and uh, and look at things on TV and uh, of, of people who grew up in maybe uh, the 40s and 50s and 60s and you know even then it was so much better than it is now. Oh, yeah. And uh, he he sees the, the the what's happening now and he knew that and that's why we come to church why to exhort one another encourage one another. Mm -hmm. That's why I love this church. You know, you, you come in and, and it's all encouraging. Amen. I love the fellowship. I, I love the uh, going out to eat and uh, I love the, the ping pong after. And uh, who's going to be playing ping pong? Anybody? <laughs> Amen. Well, Steve, are you going to play ping pong? <laughs> no. uh, <laughs> he's like, nah. <laughs> but, you know, I, I love the fellowship. You know, you come to church, uh, not only come to church to hear the preaching, but for the fellowship, the encouragement. And we ought to be the encourager. There ever not to be uh, coming to church and somebody is saying, oh, man, I don't want to talk to that person. Uh, you know, it, it ever not, not ought to be. And we ought to encourage one another. And uh, we ought to, and I love the singing. Uh, you know, the, the singing, not only the preaching speaks to your heart, but the singing also yeah, right. pre speaks to your heart. Man, I love that, love that the, the song books. 
and uh, uh, this this new modern, all this new singing, everything like that. And Christian and I had gone to uh, a church in Colorado. It was terrible, and uh, I mean, I I wanted to leave uh, just because of the singing. And uh, but the real only reason why we're there be, is because uh, we had uh, other people there that um, that uh, that we knew, and we didn't want to offend them, so we're, we sat through it. But it was it, I, I literally after the church service, I literally had to to turn uh, Christian music on. I literally had to listen to preaching to get all that ugh, off of me. Uh, and uh, I love I love the the song books and the the, uh, the singing the old the old fashioned old time yeah. singing. Amen. And uh, you know you, you go ahead and you, you, there's some a lot of the singing now uh, it, it doesn't have any doctrine in it. Yeah. And then uh, you look at uh, you know uh, uh, the the songs of, of of the old has a lot of doctrine has a lot of Jesus's blood in it has a lot of salvation in Amen. it. Amen. And uh, we continue to go to church. Go to church to motivate you to make the change uh, uh, from where you're, you're making it. And then we, then, and when when we uh, go to church and we uh, uh, and we get motivated to make that change, we number four, we walk by faith that much more. Amen. The Bible says, walk by faith, not by sight. Yes. And uh, you know, uh, trust in the Lord. If Proverbs uh, three, five, and six, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not into thine own understanding, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. And, uh, you know, when we come to, uh, we ask God for a change, and then we read the Bible for that, to get uh, more of a change. And then we come to church, get motivated for the uh, change that we made, and all of a sudden, you'll see, uh, you go out and about, and you'll have, you'll be walking by faith that much more. Amen. And you know what? Without faith, what is it? It's impossible to please him. Amen. Exactly. And so we please God even more when we're doing all of that. And uh, we walk by faith. Uh, turn your Bibles to uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. Another familiar passage of Scripture. Genesis, Exodus, Galatians. Um, just uh, Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, when you walk by faith, you have a better appreciation of Jesus Christ and what he went through. Amen. Yes. There's, there's absolutely nothing that we go through compared to what the suffering that he went through. And Amen. he's God. Amen. And uh, walk by faith. So uh, we'll be walking by faith even more. And this is the last point. And this last point is just to encourage you. The biggest change that's going to happen to us is when we get to heaven. Amen. God is going to transform our bodies Amen. into a heavenly body. The biggest change will be going to heaven. Turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse number 51. 1 <clears throat> Corinthians 15. Verse number 51. The Bible says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, and the dead in, uh, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So uh, when this corruptible shall uh, put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall all uh, then shall be uh, brought to pass the saying that is written: Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of the death, uh, the sting of death is sin. And the uh, strength of sin uh, is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And verse number 15, this is actually a good verse. Uh, I teach the teenagers as well. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 
You know, one thing that motivates us or ought to motivate us is uh, uh, the change that's going to happen when we get to heaven. Amen. Hey, there's going to be no more sorrow in heaven. Amen. There's going to be no more pain in heaven. Amen. There's going to be no more, uh, oh man, uh, Christian and I, we, we, we have gone through the last uh, month or two, uh, we've gone through uh, uh, sometimes coughing spells because of the, because uh, I don't know if it's oak or uh, pollen or what, and what is it, whatever is out there, but there'll be no more allergies up in heaven. Amen. But praise God. And uh, we don't have to take Oliver anymore. Amen. And uh, we don't have to have any uh, cough drops anymore. And uh, we don't have to walk around with a cane anymore. And, you know, and uh, uh, we don't have to uh, do all this. Uh, we're going to be changed in the moment in the twinkle of an eye. And so when the hardship comes and uh, trials come and, and pains come, you just you just uh, think, hey, it's going to all be over someday, and I'm going to be up in heaven. My body's going to change, and that's going to be the biggest change that's going to happen. And uh, we're we're not we're, we're it's going to be 100 percent pure joy, pure happiness. Amen. You take the happiest time you've ever had in your whole entire life, and it's going to be a billion times better up in heaven. And we ought to be thinking about that and let that encourage you. And uh, uh, the change, make a change in your life because God is going to change us eventually someday up in heaven. Amen. And we're going to have a heavenly body and an immortal body. <clears throat> and uh, uh, the more that you do, do down here on earth, uh, I, I believe the better it is going to be in heaven. And we're going to have sweet memories. You know, we're not going to remember all the bad things. I think that we're going to remember all the good things, though. And, uh, you know, you, we're going to see people up in heaven that we've led to the Lord. Uh, the Bible says, bring your sheaves with you. And, uh, you know, you, uh, there, uh, I'll end with this. You know, uh, going out uh, soul winning and uh, going on a mission trip. Uh, I went on a mission trip to uh, Fiji Islands. You know, uh, part of the Fiji Islands is nice. That's the, the resort part. But you go ahead and you look at uh, other parts of the Fiji Island. That's the part I went to where the missionary was. And it is, it is dead poor. Right. Uh, I've been to, uh, in the Fiji Islands, the missionary brought me to a couple of places. And where uh, people uh, have uh, tin houses. So uh, their, their house uh, probably wasn't uh, more than the size of this stage here. And it was just... Tin uh, siding, tin roof, and that's it. And that's all I had, just one room. And there's a whole entire neighborhood. They had one outhouse and the whole entire neighborhood. Wow. They had one shower for the whole entire neighborhood. And that shower, there's a, 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 a PVC pipe that came out and it had water come out. The way that they heated the water is they put some electrical current through the PVC pipe. Yeah, that's dangerous. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was like, wow. Uh, but, uh, and uh, some people, they only had one meal a day. And, uh, you know, so uh, we went out and uh, uh, we, we, I, I saw some people saved in that neighborhood and saw some people saved in another neighborhood. And I said, hey, let's, uh, uh, let, here's an idea. Let's go to a school. And he's like, oh, I've, I've never been to a school before. And I said, yeah, let's, let's go to the school. And so he actually arranged it. He went to uh, uh, the principal of the school and uh, uh, every single, they had a big, huge courtyard. And uh, every single person in that school from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade and the teachers and the principal of the school was there. There was about 900, about 960 uh, people there in attendance. And it was great. And so uh, I, I, uh, I wasn't expecting that much. So I got out there, I was like, oh, <laughs> wow, I mean, I can deal with, you know, 40, 50 people, 960 people, I was like, oh, but, uh, you know, I, but praise God, I, I got through it, and, and uh, I had a couple of balloons, I had some uh, kids come up, and uh, I was uh, uh, twisting the balloons into a cross and a heart, and uh, I, I did the plan of salvation, and I said, now, uh, if you want to pray and ask Jesus to pay for your sins, come in your heart, uh, and I, I led him through uh, the Romans Road and the prayer, and I, and I had everybody heads bowed and eyes closed, and I said, okay, I said, if you pray and ask Jesus Christ to save you, I want you to raise your hand. And almost every single person raised their hand. 
Now, I can't see their heart, but I'm not going to say, you didn't get saved. You know, I don't know if you got saved. No, that's not for us to judge. Mm -hmm. Somebody says they got saved, they got saved, and, and almost every single person raised their hand. And uh, over uh, 900 uh, souls were saved that day. Man, uh, I can't wait to get to heaven because I I've never seen him again. I, I I didn't go up to every single uh, person, I all nine hundred, and, and said, hey, you know, I'm glad that you got saved. I, I didn't get a chance to. And by the way, some of the teachers actually raised their hand to be saved too. And um, when I get to heaven, I can't wait to see how many people uh, that uh, I, I had seen saved. And it's not me, not my glory, but I'm going to be so happy because you know what. My mom had uh, led me to the Lord, and and uh, you know, and I'm gonna when I get to heaven, I'm gonna thank my mom, uh, and uh, up and down, and uh, I'm gonna uh, I can't wait to see the people that I've led to the Lord, and it's gonna be a joyous time, a joyous occasion. But uh, ask God for a change. Let's pray. Let's have an invitation time, Lord, Heavenly Father. Thank